It seemed like it was just yesterday where you were dumb if you used a single action only pistol. Fast forward to today and the Instagram set thinks you're dumb if you don't use a single action only pistol. The only problem there is that SAO double stack pistols are outrageously expensive. Enter the Bull SAS2 TAC 425. The TAC 425 is competitive with the Staccato PDPO for about $600 less. But is it any good? Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube tripping with that BDE. That's right, Big Dad Energy. Have you ever had to answer if Luke Skywalker is an alien? You think about it. I'm David and this is the Bull Armory TAC 425. Now those of you who are familiar with the channel know that this gun's big brother is what I shoot with in competition. It is the Bull Armory Ultimate Racer. These guns are a lot of fun and I just like doing that. But I spend so much time shooting the Ultimate Racer that I wanted a concealed carry gun that had basically all the same ergonomics in a very similar style trigger, very similar presentation, and that's what the TAC 425 sort of has on offer. To that point, the actual plastic bit, the grip module that you hold onto on both of these guns is the same. It's identical. So they feel the same in the hand. This one just is obviously heavier, and this one is significantly lighter and doesn't have a thumb rest. So the TAC version of pistols is available in two muzzle lengths. There is the five inch version of the gun, which is called the TAC 50, and then there is the TAC 425 because it has a four and a quarter inch commander style barrel. And the TAC 425 is so called because the barrel length is four and a quarter inches. This is roughly a commander sized gun. It is obviously wider than a single stack 1911 commander would be, but it's also lighter, only weighing about 35 ounces unloaded. What this gun is intended to do is it's kind of a jack of all trades, honestly. It can be a home defense gun if that's what you're into. It could be a concealed carry gun, which is what I use it for. Big dude, I'm about 6'4", so I can actually hide one of these bad boys without too much of an issue. But it's also just a pleasant gun to shoot. I shot an IDPA match with the gun. It went fine. It is a very pleasant gun to shoot. It's very accurate. So as a pleasurable gun, it's fantastic. And to that point, the gun comes with two 126 millimeter length magazines, which is about 19 rounds that is largely flush. It protrudes just a little bit past the magwell, which is honestly what you want, but it can do a lot of stuff at that size and that weight. So why would you want a single action only home defense gun or a carry gun? Because after all, James Yeager told you that all handguns should be nine millimeter and they all should be Glock 19. All guns should be Glocks. All Glocks should be nine millimeters and all Glock 9 millimeters should be 19s. It's actually an easy question to answer because the shooting characteristics of a double stack 1911 style pistol are absolutely heavenly. These are much nicer to shoot from a pleasurable standpoint, but also it's a lot easier to be accurate. The gold standard for what a pistol trigger should be is in the gun. It is a sliding straight to the rear trigger that has a very small amount of take up and then only a about just over two pounds and the hammer will fall and there's almost no over travel. So from a trigger precision and control standpoint, it is much easier to make your hits with because the trigger is so predictable. 20 yards, I flinched and threw that down. Looks like my zero is about two clicks to the right. The wall on the sear hammer engagement right there is very, very firm and very, very tactile. So even if you do trigger check while you're lining up your sights on target, it's very easy to hold them there until you get where you want and then drop the hammer. The actual recoil characteristics are interesting because it is a higher bore axis, nine millimeter style pistol. It does have more muzzle rise than something like a Glock style pistol, which has a low bore action. And that matters because the muzzle is gonna want to climb and return, but at the same time, all the energy that's spent flipping the gun and returning it is not being put into you, which makes it more pleasant to shoot. Once you learn how to control the muzzle climb, you're left with just a pleasant experience of shooting the gun without the shove straight back into your hand. The other reason that it is desirable is because it has a manual safety and a functional grip safety. So what that means is if you are carrying appendix, you have a manual safety that absolutely cannot actuate the trigger. So if something were to get stuck in the guard, so the manual safety, in my opinion, is fantastic, but you have to learn how to use one. The other thing that you can do is if you take your finger off the beaver tail back strap, you can put it on the hammer. This is called hammer checking. So as you put the gun into the holster, if you keep your thumb on the hammer, the gun cannot fire. So from a safety perspective, especially if you're like an appendix carrier, having a single action gun with a locking safety and a functional beaver tail safety is a nice 
nice feature to have. All of those features, does that mean that this will make you a better shooter? No, not really. I mean, if you've got bad fundamentals, this is just gonna show you that you've got bad fundamentals with a gun that costs more than like a Glock. But what is really interesting about having a nice pistol like this is that you can use it as a training tool to understand how bad your fundamentals are and correct them. Because if you know if the gun's not the problem, that means that there is a nut loose behind the sights, which is, you. That all said, I wouldn't recommend this gun to just about anyone. It would be somebody who is more fluent in firearms and firearms handling, has good gun handling, and is generally very safe. And that's for a couple reasons. Having a manual safety to navigate obviously is a concern. Having a light trigger at about two and a half pounds is not something some people are used to. If you're just used to like Hulk smashing your trigger, you're gonna end up with not being able to exploit the accuracy out of the gun. But just managing the manual safety is enough reason to kind of steer new people away from a gun like this, unless you're willing to put in a lot of work to get very used to, to where it's second nature to handle this type of pistol. Enough of the kind of platform aside, let's talk about what it is about the bull specifically that you might be interested in. So starting at the bottom, working its way to the top, as mentioned, comes with two 19 round magazines. Those are proprietary from Bull Armory. They do not take 2011 magazines. That said, aftermarket magazines are available from MBX, so you can get MBX mags if you can't get a hold of any Bull mags. Coming up to the plastic grip. I really like this grip. I've shot a lot of competition using this grip module. It's got really aggressive checkering on the back strap and the front strap that it would be similar to like a 25 lines per inch type checkering for you 1911 guys, but it has kind of an aggressive rough fissure texture on the side that provides absolutely fantastic purchase for the palm of your hand for recoil management. There is an undercut, double undercut under the trigger guard so that your support hand can absolutely lock in under the trigger guard, which is very, very nice. It comes with a uh, detachable aluminum magwell that basically keeps you from beating up the frame if you were to try and do speed loads and like competition shoot or something. The mag catch is more of a traditional 1911 style with the tapped thread. So if you wanted to put a big button on there, you could. It doesn't come with one as it is. And it's a little bit far of a reach to where if I wanna drop a mag, I do have to break down my grip to get onto the button. It is not reversible to the other side of the pistol. So if you're left-handed, you can cry about it in the comments. The trigger, as discussed, is very light, about two and a half pounds, almost no take up to right there on the face. And then it's just very minimal before the hammer drops and almost no over travel. It is a shooter's trigger. The frame is steel and the frame is actually only like this bit up here on these style guns. The part you hold on to, you traditionally think of as being the gun. It's actually just a grip module. It's held in place by this screw and this screw here. If you take those off, the whole bottom of the gun comes off. It's kind of interesting. So this is the part that the ATF cares about and regulates, which is kind of cool because it's just this little narrow piece. The other controls, so just quickly, the manual safeties are ambi, which is a nice feature to have. It is kind of trim so that it is there if you were to shoot with either hand and feels quite good. The slide stop is right there. It is kind of countersuck into the the frame, which is kind of nice. It has sort of the big textured ledge, but I still can't quite reach it with my thumb. So I end up dropping the slide with my support hand when I'm rebuilding my grip. The machining on the slide is very, very clean. It is a traditional 1911 lines with a little bit of flare. It has aggressive deep forward cocking serrations, which are quite nice. And it has these two ports to the top of the slide right there. The barrel as discussed is a four and a quarter inch bull barrel, which means it's absolutely massive. I mean, look at that sucker. It's huge. And underneath it is a a tooled guide rod. It's a full length steel guide rod, which means you have to keep a paper clip in your range bag if you want to take the gun apart at the range. You can't get the barrel out of the gun without some sort of tool to go in a little hole that's drilled inside of the guide rod. So with the slide off the gun, you just fish the little paper clip in there and you can pull the guide rod out of the gun. Riding on top of the gun, it comes optic ready and is furnished with a Trijicon RMR sight. So you can mount your favorite optical sight. As you see, I've got an RMR on it right now. More importantly, it comes with black target irons that co-witness with an RMR size sight and also co-witnesses with hollow suns, so I'm told. What's interesting about the optic mounting plate is that it's actually secured not by two screws, which is kind of the industry standard, but it comes with four screws and the screws are two pairs of screws with the non-extractor side of the gun being longer than the extractor side of the gun. So it doesn't matter which screws you use in which hole. The finish is stated as being on the gun is black PVD, which seems very hard and very resilient. I've been carrying the gun for over a month 
month now almost every single day and the finish hasn't worn out but it has taken marks there's a mark on my from my holster kind of right there on the edge of it and at some point it brushed against I guess some magazines in a range bag or something because there are these little like silver lines that I'm too lazy to go and brush off so finish marks up easily but it's not soft if that makes sense it's worth mentioning the bag that the pistol comes in because it doesn't come in a hard case like its big brother the ultimate eraser does it comes with a very nice very usable range bag that holds about five magazines and velcros the gun down and it comes with a whole host of really awesome stickers and patches so that's pretty cool so what are the negatives on the tac 425 first and foremost obviously if you're price sensitive then price while this is in my opinion a very good value it's still just over $1,900 in the third quarter of 2022, if you can find one. And that's kind of the, probably the biggest negative about the bull lineup. And that's, there aren't a ton of guns that come into the States. So that if you want one, you can't just go into the store and handle one typically, because the process to get one is you kind of have to email them and say, hey, I'd like to buy, you know, whatever model it is you want to buy. And then they put you on a list. And when they, you know, some come into the States, they let you, they give you the option to buy it. And that's the process that I went through as far as buying the pistol. Right now, and this is highly fluctuating, but these pistols are very, very popular and it's about a three month wait if you want one of these pistols. The next thing is the magazines. We talked about that already. It's not that big a deal because the magazines are solid and you can buy the MBX ones if you wanna spend a bunch of money, but the MBX mags are amazingly good. Like they're possibly some of the best made magazines in the game. Not to say that the bull mags are slouches because they're not. They come with aluminum base pads, which is nice. And they're only, I think $55, which is pretty cool, but you're definitely mail ordering magazines. And the last thing, and this is, I mean, this is any new niche sort of pistol, is that there aren't a ton of holster options for this. Now, I used the Priority One holsters for carry. I've got a bunch of different holsters for the Ultimate Racer for competition, so I just use the ones I already have. And since the grip module is the same, they all work for it. So any of the SAS2 or uh, UR style holsters for competition will fit this gun, which is pretty cool. So the negatives, in my opinion, aren't all that negative, but you know, those are perceived negatives perhaps. So where do I land on the pistol? I really, really like it. I mean, obviously I bought it and I spent a lot of money to do so, and I've been carrying it and I still really, really like the thing. At this point, I have close to a thousand rounds with it. So it's been very, very reliable for me. Since this is a carry gun, I'm not just trying to go fast and wear it out with a whole bunch of rounds, but as sort of a do-all pistol, this gun works really well. At 35 ounces, it's sort of a middleweight pistol where some people will say that's too heavy to carry. Being a big guy with a good gun belt, it doesn't really bother me. It fits me actually really well. I love where the bulls are positioned, where they're kind of like a value premium pistol, if that makes sense. The Staccato's cost you know, 20% more or whatever it is. And this basically is all the experience of a staccato while not costing quite as much, which is always a win. So I really like this pistol. I'm sure it'll be featured in a bunch of other videos here on the channel so you can come back and check it out. I appreciate you guys. If you've got any questions, sound off in the comments and we'll get to them. I appreciate you guys. I'll catch you on the next one.